Welcome back to the podcast. I'm so happy that you are here today. You're listening to episode 84. And this is a great episode. I have my friend Andrea on from Instinctual Mothering. And we basically talk about some of the most popular quote unquote must have baby items that we see a lot of influencers talking about, making sure everyone adds it to their registry. And we talk through some of these and kind of pinpoint some of the ways that it replaces the mother or can like interrupt the breastfeeding relationship. We also throw in some realistic like advice and in some ways that they could be useful. Anyways, it's a great podcast to listen to. So let's jump right in. Welcome back to Unapologetically Unmedicated, where we are fiercely taking control of our birth and so in turn taking control of our motherhood. And we're getting informed on our own terms because we absolutely do not subscribe to the status quo. I'm Fierce Lizzie, your birth bestie, and I'm cheering you on and I'm helping you have your best birth experience where you are the boss. This is not your typical childbirth education, and here on the show, we focus on the physiologic and undisturbed process of birth. We're unapologetically for unmedicated. We trust our intuitions more than the evidence, and we know our birth rights. Let's jump right into today's episode. Okay, so today we have my Instagram bestie, Andrea here. Andrea, you want to introduce yourself for anyone who doesn't know who you are? Yeah. So instinctual mothering on Instagram. <laughs> um, I'm on there with my phone up my butt all day. <laughs> and I'm a mom of two in upstate New York. I have a seven-year-old, a three and a half-year-old, almost four-year-old actually. And I'm a lactation counselor but I kind of made my Instagram surrounding mothering in a way that like is following your instincts just because when I was a first time mom I was so concerned about like doing it right and following Mm -hmm. the rules and that was just like missing so that's why I made the Instagram and then the breastfeeding thing kind of just ties into there so I get a lot of you know moms asking questions about prepping for breastfeeding Mm -hmm. breastfeeding troubleshooting that sort of stuff so yeah that's me I love it we love it uh follow I almost said following your Instagram following your intuition we love that and you have (laughs) a a breastfeeding course as well yes and we'll put all of Andrea's stuff in the show notes if anyone wants to click over and go see what she's all about but you're probably already following her (laughs) (laughs) so today we want to talk about baby registries so we're gonna like just we have no script we've just got a few lists of kind of like I don't know would you consider like the must-haves um or like the popular influencer yeah on the on the registry yeah just these are the things that I just constantly see I guess and definitely influencers promoting it and it always seems like whenever I do a post on products it like either makes people really mad or people resonate with it or I also think part of making I I understand making registries is fun when you're a first-time mom it's like what you've always dreamed of you're on the Pinterest board um you're (laughs) searching up all the things I did it too it's definitely become more cutthroat since I had my baby shower as far as all the things like the hot ticket item was the rock and play when I first became a mom and it was like $50. Yes. yes. Um, so it's definitely the things are upping in technology and capabilities and it does make it seem like these influencers are like, you must have this, or this is the Mm -hmm. thing you must have. Like I almost threw up when I saw price of the snoo. Um, I I saw it like shortly after my son was born I was like very tempted but I was like well I'm, I I can't afford that I'm not buying that right he's already yeah. almost like three months disclaimer um, Andrew and I both hate spending money <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we talk so about funny. Funny. yeah it is really funny it's just like I and that's just my personality like I will invest in something that has 
a, a high value in terms of like its usefulness or, or like its return on investment. Right. But if it's like, a, I don't know, like just, I don't, I don't like spending money on expensive things that exist in my house with my, all my kids and my dog. Right. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. Also. Uh, okay. So let's talk about the snoo. It's the, I guess, self swinging or self soothing bassinet from Harvey Karp who invented the the five S's I'm actually looking at the book on my bookshelf because I read that when Mm -hmm. uh, I was pregnant the happiest baby on the block um he's a pediatrician so the five S's were I don't know if I can name them all we can do it it's like swinging sucking shushing shushing um Mm -hmm. Swaddle. Uh huh. That's Thank four. One there might be, there's one more, but that's what the bassinet is based on. And the rock and play got recalled because it was an incline. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it rocked on its own. Um, I'm totally guilty of using it improperly <laughs> sometimes when I was super desperate. I never had one. Um, and I just started, you know, I was like, well, and then it got recalled because of the incline because babies' heads can go forward. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, someone needs to invent a self-rocking bassinet that is flat. And that's when I saw the snoo, but my son was already like three months old at that point. I was like, well, there it is. And then I almost threw up when I looked at the price. So it's crazy. It's, I, it was like 1200 then 1500 Now it's 1700 And the I just don't like it because when you are sleep deprived, you will spend that mm-hmm. happily. You will not think twice. You're like, whatever, I'm going to sleep. Yeah. I'll pay $10,000 to sleep one night. So I feel like <laughs> praise well, on but- vulnerable moms. Yeah. But here's the thing is a bunch of moms agree that like that's way overpriced. And then so they rent one. Yes. That's insane. Moms doing that. Yep, it's like $150 or something to rent a month. Um, which okay, it's still kind of a lot of money. Like I said, that rock and play was $60. Yeah. Um, I don't feel like it, it is as predatory. So but, some, but also we need to talk about the downfalls of the snoo. Yeah, that's what I was just getting into. Okay. So <laughs> the a lot of like pediatric OTs are saying that it can cause um plagiocephaly the flat head um, yeah flat head torticollis which is where they can't turn their head a certain way just because you put the baby into this like straight jacket thing mm-hmm. within the bassinet and they're just kind of like immobilized um and going in one certain way all night and I'm not saying like the snoo for every single baby is going to make them sleep through hunger cues, but right. it could for certain babies that maybe, you know, aren't good. Like maybe they're not getting enough and they're trying to conserve their energy. So instead of being fed, they're just being rocked back to sleep. And as a first time mom, you really have to know the difference between like, hey, this is a time when my baby's hungry and this is a time when maybe they just need some more soothing and we just need to be like well-versed in that before we're just hitting the button and soothing mm-hmm. the baby back to sleep. Um, so- well, And also the baby being at the breast when the baby's not necessarily hungry, it's yeah, like isn't so bad good thing. for milk supply, right? Yeah, it is not a bad thing. I understand like sometimes you're like, like I got to a point with my son where he would eat all night, like the second half of the night, just Mm kind of like there would be no like, and then like he would overfill himself. So then he'd be having reflux and I'm like, oh, "Oh, I just wish like he took a pacifier just for like an hour so I could like sleep. So I could see how like stuff like that would be useful at some points, but no, like the baby coming to the breast when they're not hungry necessarily is not a bad thing. Uh Um, So there's kind of like twofold reasons why I don't like it. And it's the price preying on moms. And then that together, um, I would have less of a problem if a mom, like I've had some people be like, well, my friend gave it to me. Right. And 
and breastfeeding is already established. We know they're getting milk, they're growing. We know what hunger cues are. Um, and we have some sort of extenuating circumstance where we don't want to co-sleep. Um, it's like not on principle, it's not some evil device, but I just put the price and then the risks together just make it something like I don't love. Yeah. And it's just and the problem with, sorry. I was just saying, and it's completely just unnecessary. Like yeah. just to, like when we're talking about the cost, you know, sure. If someone gives it to you fine, but yeah, it's just not it's not a must have baby item, <laughs> you know, but also like influencers who are getting it for free or getting it on a discount. Mm-hmm. They got it for free. They can afford it. They can afford lactation help too. Another mom might be sitting there. Like I'm going to decide between the snoo and like a postpartum doula, like, right. And all their like the same price. snoo, 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 you know? So it's not really yeah. doing a service to women in the least bit. <laughs> yeah. To your um, mom. So that's my thoughts on the snoo. Just be careful. <laughs> um, I know people will just, like I said, do anything for sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Being sleep deprived is pretty harsh in postpartum. So relating to the snoo, swaddles were another huge thing when I became a first time mom mm-hmm. it was like you have to swaddle your baby um you know like taking care of babies was like the big thing she had like a brand new Instagram account she was like the person to follow um and obviously the Harvey Carp guy too talked about swaddling and I had that book so, you know, I swaddled both my kids. Um, and I think it is another tool you could use. Mm-hmm. It comes with the same risks of covering up hunger cues potentially. Um, and they say the reason swaddles became popular was because like there's this morrow reflex where the babies like startle themselves and sometimes that wakes them up. Um so the swaddling was meant to like keep them tight in. I mean, I definitely would prefer a swaddle than that like straight jacket snoo thing where they're like strapped to the back. Yeah, <laughs> um, like strapped to a board. <laughs> like it looks. Yeah. yeah. And then there's like swaddles you can get, like ones with the arms up. I like those yeah. more because the baby could actually like go to their face with their hands. Um, breastfeeding in a swaddle is not ideal because they use their hands as like a sensory processing tool. Mm -hmm. Um, They want to feel the breast. They want to use their hands to, and a lot of people think like baby's hands are getting in the way when they're breastfeeding. But if you have the baby in a position like upright, laid back breastfeeding, it actually can, their hands can aid in breastfeeding because they're like pressing Mm -hmm. Yep. they're actually like pushing the milk out too mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so can we go back to the the moro reflex oh wait you're you gonna say something else about breastfeeding with swaddles no i'm just gonna say again it's not ideal and oh, then okay. like right so what a pain in the ass it is at night to take baby out of the swaddle yeah. breastfeed now they're asleep yeah. now we gotta transfer them to the swaddle like it's just mm-hmm. a whole big production um with the moro reflex and like the sensory, you also were talking about sensory processing, like when babies um, are, you know, free to move their hands, but that Mara reflex is also part of their sensory processing. And it like, um, what's the account that talks about this a lot on, on track baby, on track baby. Yeah. They do a great job of explaining it. It's a little over my head, but like basically when the baby startles, it's like their sensory processing of their environment. Like it is just like a function that biologically babies do and it helps with their sensory development. Um, and you can actually see later on down the road, kids who didn't have that, that have some sensory processing, like sensory processing disorder is really common in like our kids kind of generation, because we all, we swaddled them all up. So uh, from a developmental point of view, swaddles also kind of have that that risk. Not that you can never swaddle, right? Yeah. Like swaddling and then following your intuition and being able to like see when your baby doesn't like the swaddle anymore to stop to stop swaddling. Because like in the early days, it really is 
soothing for them. What I always did was I swaddled my babies for nap. Like when I would hopefully be able to like set them mm-hmm. down and like maybe go do something, I would swaddle them to kind of, you know, after we would breastfeed, swaddle them up, hoping I could get up. And then at night, you know, obviously when you co-sleep, you don't swaddle your baby anyways. So. Yeah. I was going to get to that. Cause, um, maybe we can talk about that at the end, how close sleeping kind of replaces all these things. But yeah, like if I could go back, I swaddled my kids, both of them to high heaven. I don't, I don't know. I think maybe I do stuff a little differently this way. This isn't to say like you swaddled your kids. So you screwed them up forever, but it's like, if you're pregnant right now, it's just something to think about and you can use it as a tool. Like you said, like, okay, I want to get some stuff done. Maybe um but it's definitely not because they made it seem like it was biological like it's womb like but it's actually right. not because babies can touch their face in the womb yep. and they move so and then of course it's the money thing again there's so many different ones they're like right. getting more expensive and, and there's like one for each age of your baby so like first you start here and then you go to this one and then you do the hands free and then you do the sack and then yeah yeah and then um like the weighted ones have now come mm-hmm. out and said they're not safe. Uh, no swaddle made any difference for my son, to be honest. My daughter, I feel mm-hmm. like it did make a difference. But um, what was I just going to say about the swaddles? Oh, if you want to get baby in a sleep sack, but don't want to restrict them terribly, I do actually really like that zippity zip. It looks like it's like a star. It's like a little, they look like a little flying squirrel. Mm-hmm. They can put and their, their hands legs, in. Yeah, their hands are yeah. in. Um, they can put their arms and legs out, um, but it just keeps them contained, I guess. And, well, and it's like a safe blanket. So it's not yes, like a blanket yes. that's going to cover their face. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, my son actually still sleeps in it. He's almost oh four. <laughs> that's so cute. Because when I put it on him it's like a signal to him like oh it's bedtime mm-hmm. like I can t- look at his eyes while I'm putting it on him and he's like oh, oh it's yeah. ready for bed and then he like <laughs> he plays with it with his hands uh-huh. just to like soothe himself I guess so, but, funny. so I do like that one it's not so restrictive um so I guess along those same lines, like something to use as a tool is pacifiers, which people ask all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, Neither of my kids ever took a pacifier. (laughs) I tried. um, Just because, like I said, those nights my son would just like not want to get off the boob at all. Mm -hmm. Um, So pacifiers, you're going to have all different types of advice on them my daughter sucked her thumb which is causing orthodontic issues Mm -hmm. and that's not something you can take away so right I prefer a pacifier to Mm -hmm. um to a thumb but you can't like force a baby to take a pacifier and you can't force right so my kids my kids were the same I tried a pacifier I think with all of them, I feel like my first took it for like a short window. So for like maybe around month three, she would like kind of, you know, suck on it and hold it in her mouth. And then I, I, the other kids just, no, they just, unless I was holding it in their mouth, they were like, (laughs) I just like spit it out. And they, you know, I'm the pacifier. Yeah. And it's important. (laughs) Another thing to remember, like, once again, your baby sucking to pacify is not a bad thing um that is fine especially if you're a first-time mom just chill on the couch with the baby on the boob like just chill out it's okay don't need to put the baby down and get stuff Um, I actually love the postpartum like the first three months postpartum are my favorite because it like you can't you can like give yourself permission to do nothing and like I don't know. You and I are both kind of similar personalities where we're like, go, 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 do, 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 like on to the next, like be productive, which is, you know, not, you know, we try not to be like that all the time, but to have that permission for three months to just like sit and hold your baby 
And I, I remember so fondly my first postpartum because I didn't have any kids, right? I just had the one baby. And I would just, I watched, that was when I first watched Grey's Anatomy and I blew through the first like six seasons. And I just remember it being like so sweet and just like hanging out with this baby at home. Like that's how it should be, you know? Yeah. So you don't need to like pop a pacifier in their mouth and get stuff done. Uh I totally like with my first, I definitely was not, I mean, I definitely did sit around and watch TV, but I was definitely, I remember just, I was basing my value on like what I could get done Mm -hmm. while I put her, that is the whole, that's every mom. This is the whole, like, I guess, seed of why like my account exists. Cause Mm -hmm. I was so obsessed with like getting her independent from the first you know you know moment get her on the schedule get her on the yeah yeah Yeah. I remember one day I was so proud of myself because I had went out and picked kale and like got it ready for the freezer and stuff and I was like oh my god I did something so it's hard when you base your value on what you did Mm mm-hmm my second I definitely was like okay three months I'm on the couch I don't care Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so with the pacifier too like if you're going to do a pacifier like ideally like what the AAP says if you care about that is like Andrea's doing air quotes you can't (laughs) (laughs) Um, you can hear it in her voice probably (laughs) they want you to take it away between six and nine months like I don't know too many people that do that um Mm -hmm. I mean but that's the recommendation for orthodontic jaw. Right. Because biologically that doesn't make sense because the baby suckles to sleep. Like they still need that comfort. Yes. But with a pacifier, the way that it's shaped, Mm -hmm. especially those bibs ones, they're very popular with influencers. Mm -hmm. All these influencers, kids, I don't want to talk shit about a kid, but it's not their fault. It's not them, but they have something called influencer mouth. And it's, you can tell all of them that use that bibs pacifier. Like the jaw is on the floor. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to name names, but it's called influencer mouth. I made it up. Oh my gosh, (laughs) Andrea. (laughs) I don't want to talk shit about a kid. I mean, I'm not saying like, it's not the kids, it's the parents because right. this pacifier, this bibs pacifier is being promoted. I bought it. My son didn't take it. I bought it too. Mm-hmm. Um, they're expensive too. All these things are very expensive. Just go get a mam's pacifier for, you know, $5 at Dollar General. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, the fact the reason why it kind of ruins their teeth is it's very bulbous. Um, when a baby or toddler sucks on a pacifier, the I guess the forces pull the teeth in. When a baby breastfeeds, the forces push the teeth out. It's a different sort of suck. Um, so a pacifier is like sucking on a straw. You're sucking like in. And breastfeeding, the tongue does like peristalsis. So it like waves and it goes up against the jaw and it widens your jaw. Um, So that is the reason why they say take it away at six to nine months. Um, But a lot of people don't because it's very difficult (laughs) because the baby needs it to sleep. Um, So if you're going to use a pacifier, I would look for one that has a gradual slope. Um like even if it says orthodontic I don't like those either those are just those are the tiny uh nipple ones I like um even flow balance they have a bottle and a pacifier I like Dr. Brown's and then I like the Ninico which is a little bit more expensive um I have a discount code but (laughs) I like it it's very wide and like like I said it has the same motion it's not just like a breast but it has the same motion where it widens the jaw, but it's like a tool to use. Like I said, in those like worst case scenarios, or if you're in the car and you can't put your boob in the baby's mouth. Yeah. In the car. Yeah. is clutch. Yeah. And let's also just make a note on that. 
expanded air palette is like your airway. And it, when you have a narrow, I don't, this is again, not my area of expertise, but when your mouth and jaw and airway is narrow, it leads to like all these problems later on in life yeah. that nobody kind of associates. It's kind of like a newer field of, of things, but I don't know if you've ever seen like kids get like expanders to open up their airway because it like gives them ADHD if they can't breathe right. And yeah, yeah. I'm about to pay close to $4,000 to get my daughter's uh, palate expanded because she sucked her thumb. Yeah. Um, that is like the same forces that pull it in. So it's just something to think about it. Like you said, the research is new. There's a lot of accounts. I'm not totally an expert I know Beth at Little Movers PT talks about it a lot mm -hmm. um, or the Breathe Institute um it's just something to be mindful of so I'm kind of glad my son never took a pacifier and that's also one of the reasons why he still is taking the breast I don't, I don't know how much milk he's getting yeah but he's still nursing before bed and his jaw is a lot bigger his mm -hmm. palate is a lot wider you can tell um so yeah, it's kind of a tool. Yeah. My, I, I actually had to take my oldest in the dentist, like recommended to go see like an airway orthodontist. And she was never really, she never took a pacifier or sucked her thumb. So it's not, it's not like 100%. So like, don't think that like, Oh no, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's all my fault. Right. So I just yeah, to no. <laughs> it's totally like, it's just common to have like smaller jaws, I think. Um, and like also tongue ties can have an impact, but we don't need to get into that. <laughs> um, <That's> another episode. <laughs> so yeah, totally. So like another thing, so Duna, you know, that little, um, car seat that is like a stroller. Yes. Car seat okay, that goes so in a stroller. When did this come out? Because I feel like I never, ever saw this. So like it had to come out like in 20, like, 21 yeah. or something. Yeah. Like one or two years ago, nothing to do with breastfeeding, but whenever I talk about products, I do end up talking shit about it because <laughs> again, the price, because I'm like, oh my God, both my babies were out of bucket seats by like nine months. Why mm -hmm. would I pay $500 for a um a bucket seat that only oh. lasts nine months but people are love it so. I hear I hear a lot of good things about it too they're like you have to have it it's so convenient to like not have to take baby out of the car seat um but like isn't it bad for them to be extended time in the car seat like they always say like don't keep your baby in the car seat not in the car right? Like does that promise that they're at the right angle while they're strolling in the car seat? Yeah. And probably, huh? No, from an OT perspective, probably um, people like bucket seats because they can take the baby out if the baby's sleeping. Um, mm -hmm. Well, you've been there. The I mean, sleeping. You, um, too, right? you take the whole car seat out and put it in the, in the grocery yeah. cart. The baby is sleeping, right? Yeah. So, long quick side note my I had a babysitter for my daughter um like sh for a short time when I went back to work I went back to work with her she was like five months old and then I worked till June you know when I that was like when my last time being a teacher um so like for seven or eight months she had a babysitter and the babysitter's like I just let the babies sleep in their car seats for naps and I was like absolutely not like no because well, around that time p things started coming out like a baby died from sleeping in their car mm -hmm. sleep mm -hmm. so yeah it's definitely not an ideal position for baby to be in like a ton of time um the duna would not directly impact breastfeeding the only reason uh, it it comes up is because it's the popular influencer thing and again it's going to take money away from actual support so if you are would rather put money towards a lactation right. consultant or, you know, a birth course or breastfeeding course um, right. or something like that, or house cleaner, 
yeah. I just tell moms that's a better use of $500, but some moms love it, especially when they have multiple kids and they're like trying to get everyone out of the car. Yeah. And some moms, like if they're getting it for their first and they know they're going to use it like three oh, more yeah. or two more times, you know, that kind True. of makes a little bit of a difference on an investment as well. Um, Probably resell it too. Yeah. Yeah. And the resell. But also, if you want to skip the bucket seat, you can do that. Um, you can mm -hmm. just go right to the convertible. You can get a baby carrier. We love baby carriers. That's, That's what I was going to say. You know what the like crunchy, intuitive, whatever you want to label us moms do. We just use the baby carrier. We put baby directly from the car seat, you know, into the baby carrier. Instead. Once, like, once you get into the baby wearing world, it's a rabbit hole and you'll want to buy all of them. Um, but so that's another so, issue with cost, but <laughs> I never well, did that. Actually. I only bought, I bought one with my oldest. I bought an Ergo. They're only one. They only had one model then in 2013. And I used that with all my kids. And then I got a ring sling. I used that with all my kids. And then someone gifted me like a soft, stretchy Catan or something like that. So, um, second hand and that's kind of a solution for a lot of this stuff if you have limited resources mm -hmm. i love second hand i mean all my baby cares are second hand yeah still beautiful yeah or to be able to get the support and the yeah. baby registry item yeah yeah and that baby cares go along with you know baby swings somewhere to put baby mm -hmm. during the day a sleeping um, solution to be able to get things done yeah secure yep I never really had a baby swing um just because it's so bulky and I'm like yeah. I don't want this in my house and they can only use it for so many months and then it's just in the way um you know especially if you don't have any pets like a blanket on the floor is probably yes. <laughs> just well, as good and so we were, play. yeah we were also going to talk about the the mama roo which is like a version of a swing and I did get one wild. of those. Yeah, I did get one. And yeah, the kids like sometimes liked it. Like I didn't get, I thought I was going to put the baby in it and then like be able to do all these things, right? Um, that didn't happen. Like, of course your baby wants you. Like they want closeness to their mother. They don't necessarily want. Uh, yeah. I, I mean the uh, movement, but. I've heard from a lot of people, like my, my baby hated that oh. it's like $400 or something. Yeah. Um, I would prefer one of those, like they're a lot cheaper. This is now just a podcast about me telling you how to get things cheap. Um, <laughs> those like, I said the disclaimer at the beginning, <laughs> those like snuggle puppy, like, I don't know. They're like little, kind of like the baby Bjorn but a cheaper version like Fisher price has its own. It's like the little version. seat. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I would I, that's what I recommend now too, instead of the swings or the Mamaru. Cause the other downfall of the Mamaru or any mechanical swing is it's, it's a mechanical motion. There's something from an OT perspective about this constant mechanical motion. That's trying to mimic the mother, but a mother doesn't move like that. Oh. Um, and I think I read somewhere that like, the, it kind of messes with the baby in terms of like when it stops, they're still like kind of, you know, feeling this, this mechanical motion and it's oh. just like not natural. Right. That's um, weird. Yeah. So that like kind of freaked me out about it. And so then I had it, I got it with my second and sold it, bought it secondhand, sold it for exactly the same amount that I, <laughs> that I bought it for. Oh, good. Then I got another one and I primarily used it off. So like, because I had learned that they were not great to be doing that kind of mechanical motion. So I used it with, when it was off because, you know, I had a two-year-old running around. We didn't have the dog at this time, but yeah, like you said, if you have the dog and it's not necessarily safe to have baby on the floor, right. I mean, of yeah. course you can do the pack and play, like you said as well, but. Um, going along uh, with, we totally forgot to put on the list. Um, like those DACA top, which I think are starting to be recalled. Mm. Um, DACA tots, snug, what's the organic? Snuggle one? me. Snuggle me. I literally have um, in this room right now. 
uh i don't know they're the the boppy ones are starting to be recalled um like those in boppy like the boppy lounge or something yes yes because people are putting their babies to sleep in them unsupervised it's mm-hmm. not really safe because again their head can flop over so once again i'm like this is too expensive just to have something i guess it's i guess it's cute to put them on the floor i guess once again if you don't have other kids dogs when you're just like chilling around the house like yeah mm-hmm. totally but you are not supposed to use them um for co-sleeping correct um i know it seems like it's gonna be safer right but it's like a boundary around them yes but it's not safer to co-sleeping because safe co-sleeping involves no pillows, no fluffy mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the baby could like put its head down in the Correct. little crevice there. So those things, I guess, are good for just setting baby down during the day when you're just mm-hmm. around the house and you could watch them, but I would not buy them for co-sleeping so this is kind of a good segue because a lot of these products are made to replace the mother yep um same thing with like the outlet sock these monitors these crazy breathing monitors yep um they're basically there to replace the mother in my opinion they're making us further from getting getting to know our baby you know it's so and this hearing whole- our intuition too like <laughs> using our intuition it's like a muscle you like you have to flex it a little bit to get better at it and to trust it more um so it's a it's a huge mindset shift from I'm going to get all these baby devices and these are the things that are going to keep my baby safe because these are I'm going to control everything this is getting a little deep now <laughs> Um, (laughs) but really it's all just like fluff. Um, the monitors, you'd think someone like me with anxiety would be like all over that. I was going to ask you that actually. I was not at all, even back then, because I knew I'd have some sort of false alarm or something. And I'd be like in the ER with a baby now, like, that's not the experience I want to have. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that no way we've never we've never I've never owned a baby monitor granted I've also never lived in like a two-story house Mm -hmm. so like I could always kind of like peek in at the baby which you do you do that you are more now without this monitor this screen watching your baby through a screen you're more connected to your baby because you are physically going there like didn't you still check on your baby to make sure they were breathing absolutely yeah absolutely but you went over to your baby Mm -hmm. Or you kept your baby close to you, which is what we're supposed to do with our babies is keep them close to us. The monitor, I was really a little bit more crunchy back then. And I actually asked for just the old school, like monitor, like our parents had that just had sound. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Because I was like, that's all I want. I don't want Wi-Fi and EMFs. I just want that too. simple but like my sister-in-law ended up getting me a video monitor, which was fine. Uh-huh. Like by now standards, it's like a piece of junk. But um, sure. yeah, I I would say you definitely don't need the fancy video monitors. Yeah. Again, and like a lot of moms are like, well, this gives me so much peace of mind, that and the outlet sock. And, yeah. and I'm like, well, I don't know. I think it's a false sense of control. Yeah, I think so too. And um we actually got rid of our, we had a hatch, a hatch sound machine that we got, we used for two babies. Um, and we liked it. Like we also enjoyed the, the white noise, but we stopped using it because I, then I learned about EMS. Like that's a Bluetooth device. Like I can connect it to my phone. Like it's on for eight hours in a room with us. So we stopped using that. Um, and another funny story I have to tell you, we went and looked at a house recently and the owners still lived in there. So they still had the, like the rooms, they had like the kids rooms and there was a baby monitor in the room, um, like mounted to the wall there. They didn't have a baby anymore. It was like now that the, the play area, but probably that's where their baby crib was, you know? And my husband was like, what 
is going on in that house that is so weird that they have a camera in their kid's room. And I was like, actually, <laughs> almost every mom does that, but uh, but we don't, you know? So yeah. he was just like appalled. He thought some crazy stuff was going on in there. I was like, no, it's not that crazy. <laughs> Once again, the video monitors are because babies are going in to separate rooms from their mm-hmm. parents. That seems normal. Um, and I guess even just like we should know in our guts that that doesn't feel right to have your baby in another room yeah well we do moms moms cry about sleep training and moving their baby out of their bed they cry about it yeah like hello listen to what your body is saying you're fighting every like instinctual motherly urge yeah to you know be separate from your baby and yeah let's wrap back around to what you said earlier that like all of these things are made so that we don't co-sleep with our babies. Like, thank you. Um, what's it? The back to sleep campaign that happened in like, I don't know. I can't remember the year. I didn't look this up or anything. Like but. N- early nineties. Okay. I-, I feel like it was even a little bit before that. M- there might've been two. There might've been more than more than one, you know, cause I feel like it was like Ronald Reagan, but I could be wrong. Well, my, I was born in 1986 and my sis and I have two sisters, once born in 90 and one born in 94. And my mom was like, yeah, like for you and your, my first sister, they, you are on your stomach. And my third sister was oh. born in 94 was on her back. So like, okay. So maybe it was then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or that's when, definitely when your mom caught wind of it, that is so funny. Um, but yeah, that's where that came from. And that's when they said, you know, co-sleeping is dangerous. Uh, and now well, it's all these products to help you manage yes. co-sleeping, but without the baby in your bed. When you could solve every problem that these products solve can be solved by you sleeping next to your baby or contact napping with your baby. I know. And uh, some people just really don't want to. And then some people have one of the risk factors, like, Mm-hmm. their partner smokes or they had a premature baby mm-hmm. uh, or you know whatever other ones you have to look up the safe sleep seven it's like invented by la leche league and the book sweet sleep by la leche league is great um highly recommend um you want like a firm mattress like one of my clients she doesn't want to go sleep because her mattress is like super uh soft so she's like not into it like she thought about getting a new mattress um but like so I think these tools are there for when moms have like suboptimal um you know we're in a modern world I understand you know not everyone wants to co-sleep I think even if you don't think you want to you should at least research or you'll be in a situation where you're accidentally falling asleep with the baby in the bed um so no one wants that um that's why I do a lot of education about how to set that up like in my course and stuff just in case and I tell everyone just in case like just yeah. know what the conditions are um you know you don't need a baby monitor you don't need a swaddle you know mm-hmm. you don't need the snoo it can kind of replace you don't need a all those fire. things and like with the docotot they think that it's safer because they're contained but actually when you do, when you, you have to sleep in what's called the cuddle curl, it actually protects the baby because you're not able to roll over, over your arm. Um, like sleep monitors. Yeah. Like sleep monitors, your baby is like in sync with your breathing and respiratory yep. rate and yep. heart rate when you go sleep. So yep. take you, care regulate, of that. you regulate their breathing with your breathing. So I just wanted to give some ideas look because like I said I know we live in a modern world and not everyone is like you know in a cave with their baby naked eating berries or whatever so (laughs) even though I wish I was sometimes um but you can do that you can still mimic that in the in the modern world you absolutely can and I think that's part of what we're what you're getting at too when you say you teach your moms like this option does exist because if we don't say it what are they gonna hear and then all these moms are like with the snoo yeah yeah up all night stressing 
making sure their baby's sleeping. They're terrified of SIDS. Mm -hmm. um, it's just very sad, the culture that we've created around postpartum um, because we're just divorced from all these things. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, you can still get some stuff and you can save money. <laughs> yeah, and let me let me give another point to co-sleeping. With my first, I was I was afraid to co-sleep and I didn't start co-sleeping until she was like 6 months old. Same. Yeah, so like, you know, I would wake up with her and I'd go out to the couch and like nurse her. Um and I even did that a little bit with my second. Well, so with my first, her my husband at that time was in the military, so it was just me and her. So I didn't have to share the bed with him. Um, but then with my second, I was nervous about him co-sleeping. Like I was already good at it. So for a little bit, I would go out to the living room, nurse on the couch and then come back. And I always did when they were tiny, tiny, this, the little sidecar bassinet. So I could kind of have a little more space. And I was also wanted to like sleep on my stomach so bad. Um, <laughs> so then you can like bring them in and out of the bed so easily, you know, but with my third, after that first few months, like I just had her in the bed next to me, never, ever got out of the bed to breastfeed at night. My son always pooped in the middle of the night. So I would have to like get up and change him, but she never pooped. She never needed to be burped. I slept for like 10 hours. I am mm -hmm. not kidding you. You get so much sleep when you co-sleep. It's yeah, that's a, that's a point for co-sleeping. So if, I didn't feel like I didn't feel awful all day because I was so tired. I didn't even have to nap during the day. So when the baby was napping, I could like get up and tend to my other children and do our homeschool and all that stuff. So that's, that's amazing. That's the biggest reason that like I want moms to co-sleep is so that they can sleep and they're not sleep deprived zombies being like the newborn stage sucks so much. And Actually, it's not just because they're so tired. And if you're super nervous, like the first three, it's actually, co-sleeping is actually protective of SIDS mm. after I think 12 weeks. Mm. So if you're super nervous, you can wait until 12 weeks. I know that's like the hardest time, but you can do like a sidecar or something yep. or like taking shifts with your husband or partner is also an option. You could do that until they hit that 12 week mark if mm -hmm. they're like a full term baby growing good everything's going good no smoking mm -hmm. no fluffy blankets and stuff co-sleeping is actually protective for SIDS yep. so um just dig into the research and don't because we all listen to like the propaganda with like you know right yep. terrible advertisements there's one with like a baby in the bed with like a meat cleaver it's like this is I have you're killing your these. baby these images someone else sent me she had like seen um it was our friends from you know, mom's off the record she was like there was a a link on the back of a fire truck that was about yeah. safe sleep and she was like I'm curious I'm gonna check it out she sent the link to me and it's just graphics just like that like baby in the bed in a onesie and in the onesie clearly is like um you know redesigned graphically to say like I, I can't remember, but like, don't kill me. Like, keep me in a crib. Don't kill me or something like that. I was just, I could not believe it. It's like, it's no wonder moms are afraid to go sleep and then buying all of these products. And then we have the yeah. influencers who are uh, taking video of them turning on all the lights in their house to get up and nurse their baby or pump and then yeah. feed a bottle to their baby in the middle of the night. It's like, it doesn't have to be that hard. You know, no, oh, yeah, that's another, that's a whole other topic, yeah. Um, but okay, here's a good segue to my um, my little plug perfect. So, like, co sleeping part of the safe sleep seven is breastfeeding, yep. Um, it's a risk factor formula feeding for SIDS, so um. You know, that's just a fact because breastfeeding moms are more, their bodies are more in sync mm -hmm. with their babies. Yep. The baby is honed in on the breast. The baby can smell the breast. They stay in that cuddle curl position because they're honed in on the breast. Mm -hmm. um, not saying co-sleeping is impossible, but you can choose. It is like an additional risk factor if you're not Correct. breastfeeding. Co-sleep, 
you can so you can allot some of this budget for your uh, products to breastfeeding education. Yep. Um, and I've got a course slash membership. You guys can check it out at Instinctual Mothering. Um, it's called Empowered Breastfeeding Academy slash now it's kind of a club because you can pick like what membership level you want. If you just want to join for like three months, six months, a year, there's all sorts of options. And we have like a small group community. This is like small guys. I'm not like taking care of babies. Correct. Like a huge You're not going to just log in and watch videos and never hear from Andrea again. You're actually going to get yeah. on calls and offer support. And I love yeah. the membership because it allows you to fit your support to your budget. Um, so yeah. I think that's so helpful and you're making it a lot more accessible to moms. And that's if you want to co you have to learn how to sideline nursing. So I'm sure yeah. you cover that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the co-sleeping ebook in there. Um, yeah. So we have like our small community and then we have meetings. Um, so yeah, if anyone wants to check it out, please do. Like when you're pregnant is the ideal time. But if you've already had your baby, that's okay too. That's why I did the separate membership options. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Andrea, for coming and chatting. This was fun. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. I appreciate you so much for being here with me today on the podcast. If you found this episode helpful at all, the best way to show your support is to take a screenshot and share it to your socials. Be sure to tag me because I would love to see what you thought of this episode. Or you can simply forward the episode to a mom friend, to someone who's planning for their birth, to someone who is trying to conceive. This is how we get more mothers informed. And if you have a second to leave a rating and review on whatever platform you're tuning in on, that is beyond helpful to get these shows out to more mamas. I'll be back soon with another episode, or you can follow along with me daily over at Fierce Lizzie on Instagram. Stay fierce, moms.